I have another flashlight review for you. This time it is the Pelican 3310 ELS. Something a little bit different. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank Pelican of Canada for sending this flashlight to me so that I could share it with you. So this has a bit of an interesting backstory. I have reviewed quite a few flashlights in the last number of months on my YouTube channel, and one of my regular viewers had commented that they had not had as good a flashlight as their old Pelican flashlight, which they no longer had, unfortunately, and wished they could still find. So I thought I'd take a little look around, reached out to Pelican Canada, and they agreed to send this flashlight to me. So what it will do is we'll go down to the tabletop, I'll go over this flashlight's key features, its physical specifications, its performance specifications, and then of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. So just before we take a closer look at the flashlight, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So it did come with the usual manual operating instructions and warranty information. It came with a nice little lanyard, but most unique is this encasement system, a Pelican case that's intended to be mounted on the wall with the included hardware, of course, that will allow you to set this up as an emergency flashlight station in locations somewhere in your home, your office, your garage, wherever you would like to use it, and this would close over and it would be available to you during an emergency. So that's what this actually stands for, the Pelican 3310 ELS Emergency Lighting System. So it's just a nice feature to have. In fact, I think I will be installing this at a certain location near my kitchen just in case of power failures or the need to go into the basement at night to look for something. So yeah, that's a nice case. Now let's take a closer look at the flashlight itself of course. And like all Pelican cases, well made, designed to be very strong and waterproof. Remove the flashlight, comes out nice and easy. All right, so it's a very simple flashlight and it has some very unique, well, at least different, not commonly seen features. Obviously, right off of the top, as you can see with the Pelican flashlights, they are made of a synthetic ABS type plastic, I believe, if I'm not correct. I will put in the information below or on the screen as well. So as I mentioned, it is a wall mountable case. That's one of its key features. Something else about this should be obvious is this light green color. So if it looks like it glows in the dark, that's because it does. And I've done some testing with this having, it's the type of uh, material that absorbs light and then slowly gives it back over a period of time. And it lasted most of the night. I set it on my nightstand next to the bed to see how long it would last. And it probably lasted six hours anyway. So, you know, that's not bad at all, especially if, uh, you know, even at that, when uh, I got up, it was still glowing. It was just not obvious. But if you knew where you were looking for the light, you would still be able to see that glow. It only has three lumen settings, or actually two lumen settings, a high and a low, and it has an SOS setting. So let's go over some of the specifications for the light. So the overall length is exactly six inches or 15.5 centimeters. The diameter at the basal is 1.75 inches or 4.3 centimeters. And the weight is 6.5 ounces or 185 grams. Now I mentioned that it only has two lumen settings, a high and a low. The high setting is 376 lumens, which will last for seven hours and 30 minutes. And the low is 40 lumens, which will last for 188 hours. Now I just want to point out for a second, the fact that this does not have a high a lumen setting as many of the modern small aluminum case flashlights in no way makes this handicapped as uh, you, you'll see when I get it outdoors. In fact, I was surprised and pleased. And it has a lot to do with the design of the reflector, which is mirror and deep inside. So it gives me a very nice tight white hot spot in the center of the beam with sufficient flood on either side. And in comparing this, it is I'd say comparable to some other flashlights that I have approaching uh, six or eight 
100 lumens. It's just the design. It makes maximum use of its available lumens. It does run on three AA alkaline batteries which were provided with the light and they lock into the base right here. There's a little locking mechanism that allows you to make sure it does, they don't come out. And the beam distance for this, I guess, is what it, it makes it so bright for its size and lumen settings. The beam on high will reach out to 231 meters and on low for 74 meters. It does come with an IPX8 waterproof rating. However, the literature does not provide an impact resistance, which is what's interesting because it was the impact resistance that my, my uh, viewer touted as being so good about the Pelican lights. And I have no reason to disbelieve it. I have had good, hard ABS industrial flashlights, flashlights before that have withstand, uh, withstood some pretty sturdy drops. In fact, that's what they used to issue us in the police force many, many years ago, was uh, just an industrial two uh, D cell flashlights. And I can tell you from experience that the bulb would uh, smack it, or the bulb would break, the batteries would crush, but the cases usually remain pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much in good shape. All right, so as you can see, there's not a lot to see on this flight. As far as operation goes, everything is done from this button right here. I'll tell you now, it does not have a memory. And every time you turn it off and turn it back on, it will go to the low setting. You can give it a half tap and, well, sorry, it went to the high setting and they give it a half tap. It goes to the low setting. And if you give it another tap, it goes into the strobe mode, a nice slow strobe at that. I kind of like that feature on it. Give it another tap, it goes back into the high and you can cycle through. Now the company had, uh, when they sent this to me, they asked or they said they'd be interested in seeing what I thought of this in terms of bushcraft operations. And uh, well, here are my thoughts on this now and I'll, I'll provide you more thoughts when we close out the video. But I think this is a very valid light to take with you camping or in the woods at any time for a couple of reasons. One, in the daytime, you're going to find this relatively easy if you were to drop it because of its light green color. And at night, if you uh, lay this down in your tent, there's a good chance you'll still have light most of the night, at least certainly during the summer, most of the night, that you'll be able to find it if you need to grab it and use it for whatever reason. The simplicity of this is what makes it such a nice little light. And I'll tell you, it feels wonderful in the hand. It's nice to have a flashlight that actually fills my hand. I do have a double XL hand, but just the same, you know, most, a lot of the modern flashlights are very small. I appreciate this being larger and just grippy enough that I have no problems holding on to it. I actually feel very comfortable up using this light. And as you'll see when we get outdoors, it performs very, very well. It's not an especially compact light, but neither is it so big that you won't find a place for it in your pack. So those are some of my thoughts on it now, but I think what we need to do is get outdoors and do some testing. All right, doing a little outdoor testing of the Pelican 3310. And uh, well, like I mentioned before, when you do turn it on, it comes on in high. And you know, even though this isn't marketed as an outdoor light, I quite like it. I like the way it feels and fits in my hand. I like the fact, of course, that it does glow in the dark. And that's a reasonable amount of light penetrating quite deeply down the trail, a good 50, 60 feet, at least as far as I can see down the trail. Tap the button, goes into low mode. Low, not so much for navigation, but pretty nice for working around in a tent maybe. And now it's gonna go into the low strobe mode. All right, that's been the Pelican 3310 flashlight. All right, so something just a little bit different this time, the Pelican 3310 ELS. I want to thank Jim for recommending that I take a look at Pelican lights. Uh, because, you know, I don't know that I would have otherwise, but I'm very glad I did. I really like this light. It must be the simplicity of it, the size and the way it feels in my hand, but it just seems to have a lot going for it. So when I was doing the testing outdoors, I want to share with you the flashlight that I was actually compared with, and that is the Wuben T1 tactical flashlight and so this will be reviewed separately. So a very, very different flashlight, but as you can see, quite close inside. And it was on the medium setting of the Wuben at the, uh, the higher lumen setting that compared 
very well against the high setting on the Pelican light. So this is in no way uh, hampered by having the lower lumen settings. I think you'll find that for most uses, the low will be fine when you don't need a whole lot of light and don't want to wash out your night vision. And the high is sufficient for most of your needs, especially around a house and certainly around a campsite. It's not a searchlight, but I think it will serve, it will serve very well for most other uses. Okay, if you have any questions about the Pelican 3310, then please put them in the comments section below or any comments. If you have any other suggestions for future videos, please put those in the comments section below. And as always, all the information I have on with regards to this flashlight, including where you can purchase it, I'll have that in the video description. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Day. Get outside and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.